I gotta say, those upgrades and downgrades are very focused on old world tech names, yeah. right? Yeah. That could be considered value these days. For sure. Are technology stocks among those that you consider value oriented? Uh, yes, they can be. Uh, obviously, it depends on valuation. But we are actually overweight, or we have the highest weight in technology we've had for a while now at the firm. So again, still significantly less than the overall market. But there's some tech in our portfolio, including Qualcomm. And so when we look at the downgrade today, I mean, the stock has had a huge run. And so even for us, we still see some upside left. But after a large run, I understand a downgrade like this because the valuation has moved up significantly recently. So let's talk about this idea of value versus growth. We've talked sure. about these rotations within sectors. Now it seems as though... For the longest stretch here, we've seen growth type stocks outperform value. But in the last month to two, we've seen value start to outperform. Is that the beginning of a new trend? Well, we certainly hope so. I think it's a question of, of uh, when, not if. So we've seen the longest growth trend, as you suggested, longer than the Nifty 50, longer than the tech boom in the late 90s. Over the last basically nine to 10 years, we've seen growth outperform value. The good news is, and as, as a 40-year value firm, we've seen these things before. When it turns, value tends to outperform for a significant period of time, an average of about seven years, and you know a significant uh, run over that period of time. So we see the factors starting to happen. It's hard to say if today is the day or not, but clearly we think it's overdue, and uh, we believe in this trend continuing for a long time. So when you say value, what exactly are you looking for factor-wise to, to, to match your value? Is it dividend growth? Is it price to earnings ratios as a price to sale. What exactly is the biggest factor that you're looking at when it sure. comes to value? We, we tend at Barrow Hanley to combine the three factors we prize the most. So PE and price to book below the market and a yield premium to the market is the way we tend to find value and build our portfolios. We look at the other things you suggested like price to sales or EBD, Badar, cash flow, et cetera. But those are the three components we look at the most and the three that we believe over time adds the most value. All right, so when you say yield premium, that means you are looking at those dividends as part of that picture. What types of companies right now are the ones that are the highest on your shopping list? You know, it's interesting. The yield is an interesting paradox right now because generally highest yielding names, we call them the rust stocks or defensive names like real estate, utilities, staples, telecom. That's traditionally where you go for high yield. Unfortunately, those sectors of the market are also highly valued right now, right? Because rates have been so far low for a long time, that's where they benefit. So we have to go outside those areas to find significant yield. The good news is, is lots of companies now over the last several years have started focusing on yield, growing yield. So you can find meaningful yields in consumer discretionary and financials and energy and industrials. So you don't have to just go to the traditional areas of the market to find yield especially because those areas right now don't look attractive to us. Are there, are there favorites that you have right now that you're looking at? Um, well, within those sectors, like I said, since we think defensive is expensive, we're generally moving to the more what's traditionally called the cyclical areas of the market, but trying to find within those areas more stable businesses with good valuations and, again, the ability to grow earnings, dividends, cash flows, et cetera. Do you care about the Fed? Do you care about these U.S.-China trade dogs right now? Of course. Um, so those are the two big factors in the market. It looks as though the Fed's accommodative, and so let's just start by saying that, right? It's, the whole world seems to be trying to make sure there's an inflation of asset values or a continuation of this growth pattern. So that's a positive. The tariffs, I think, are a huge issue for the market and continue to create uncertainty. The problem is, is it's hard to know what's really happening out there when it could be trade-related, there could be softening related to that, or is it really an economic cycle? So until we get through some of these issues and there's some clarity around it, it, it sits in my mind as the largest issue for the market.